Can you hear me? Yes, Dante. How are you? I'm me? Hey, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. I'm good. So you're gonna, you, you say you're going to make me the host, and then you're yeah. going to have to run out. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's a me... lot of meeting going around today. So many. <laughs> yeah. We got to find a way to spiff them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make you host right now. Right. Then I should be able to show my screen and do all that other stuff, right? That's correct, yeah. I just made you host. All right, let me see. Okay. Let me try to, if I would like to show my screen, if it shows up. Okay. Let me put my camera on so you could see me. Yeah. All right. You, yeah. Are yeah. You able, I can. Are you able yeah. To see me? I, I can see you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you should be able. Be... Yeah, you should be able to let people in from the waiting room as a host. Okay. Great. Yes. Okay. All right. The only thing I was concerned about is sharing my screen. Fortunately, I'm going to have this meeting from where I'm sitting on a car. <laughs> I want to see how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have it on your, if, if whatever you're trying to share, you have on your phone, um, you should still be right. able to share your screen as the host. Oh, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Let's hope everything. This is the last meeting for the month for this thing. So I'm kind of since I have you on the, on there, I might as well. So let me get it clear. So we go on hiatus for two months. And that is for, right yeah, you oh, guys go on hiatus, <laughs> but I still work. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, but I, I, that's unfair because I wanted to see if anything else we could do in the summer, like preparing for September. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I would recommend um, you speak to Fred, you know, maybe right. tomorrow. Um, because, you know, if you guys are interested in doing stuff over the summer, I'm not sure exactly what that protocol is. Um, but, okay. you know, that's, yeah, that's Fred's uh, arena, not mine. All right. I will reach out to him about it. Okay. Because that's one of my agenda items. What can we do for the summer to prepare for the fall? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I already have, I already have five people here, so I'm going to let them in. I okay. Three, three minutes to seven. So I appreciate you. Thank you very much for everything. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good so luck. So you're going to be here for a few minutes and then go, right? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Good evening, everyone. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, good evening. How is this? Oh, I cannot, I don't know all the voices yet, so I cannot. Is this, was this me now? All right, again, it's here. I have a Galaxy S10e. Good evening, everyone. Just identify yourself as you come in. Oh, we're going to go and introduce ourselves around. Can everyone hear me? I cannot hear anybody. Yes, I can hear Marina. you. Oh, OK. Thank you for responding. All right. Ms. Noel Myers is here. Pretty very good. Mm -hmm. OK. Anybody else? 
let's see what else we're going to look at. Mm. Seven fifty-nine. Good evening. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. I know Al. <laughs> hey, Brenda. <laughs> Julia yet. I'm here. I'm changing my name. Ah, I'm not, okay. Well, I, I'm, I, not I I'm not Dino. I'm not Dino. I'm not Dino. You're not Dino. Okay, I said I'm <laughs> not Dino. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a Galaxy S10, so I don't know. Maybe this person will change their name also. Oh. Hi, Julia. It's nice to see you. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Jill. Hi, Julia. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> Me too. Me too. This, ret this retirement, <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> do, do, do a small thing, take a nap. Nap. Have lunch, <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> Meet your friends for breakfast, take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Empathize and empathize. I'm in that state myself. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I, 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 went to, I, went to, I went to a hearing this afternoon okay. for, the nine, for the 960. Three hours. Three hours, same player. While we're at this, can we figure out someone who might be willing to do um, the minutes? Uh, yes, that was gonna be my first order of business. Oh, well, I'm glad you just brought that up. Is there anyone who would like to volunteer to do the minutes? But I'm hoping by, uh, when we, we, we convene again in September, we'll have a permanent secretary. So that way, that would be a moot point. So, so that's the thing we have to, to plan to do. I mean, what I worked on in terms of the minutes, because um, we'll get to that point when I want to go to the agenda, because I have that as part of this agenda item. But we want to take first talk about the presentations after the roll call. Did anybody get a copy of the agenda? I have one. It was attached to the, min the meetings notice. Yeah, specifically the uh, committee members. Okay. Yes, I got a copy of the um, the agenda. It was attached to the um, the meeting notice. It's attached to the yes to the notice for the meeting, May I? Nicholas, I'm just suggesting that we like maybe wait a good another three or four minutes because we have a full yes, agenda. Probably, we'll be here all night. Seven or three. At least uh, by seven or five. Or seven okay, or do seven. that. Yeah. Just give Good evening, everyone. It's Mina. Oh, good evening, Mina. How are you? I'm well, yourself? I'm well. I'm glad to see you or hear you. You'll see me soon. <laughs> you just got in from the store. Well, I'm pleased that you attended, so. 
maybe by September we will be able to meet in person. Hmm. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so, yeah. Stuff all is virtual. Yeah, you all are cute, but you know, I want to see people in face, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I'm thinking there may be a combination of both. I mean, people will have the in person, and then some people could participate uh, virtually also. Mm -hmm. That way, you get you can get the best of both worlds. Well, if half the people who showed up did any work, we might be okay. I'm just saying, yep. you know, everybody needs uh -huh. to step up. Oh, absolutely. Everyone needs to Make step sure up. Everybody, you get yourself vaccinated. Okay. Um, we. I am also the co-chair, so I'm calling it. We're seven six. No, no. Um, wh wh why you want to take over? Because <laughs> I want to get over. I got things to do. I know you want to get over, but uh, I said 705. The outside. I said 705. <laughs> it's 706. <laughs> but well, well, I just want to make one correction. You are not the co chair, you're the vice chair. That's the, there's a difference. Oh, not really, but dang it. keep it moving. Keep it moving. That's the, well, that's the, that's why they told me we can choose a vice chair. There's only one committee in the board that have co chairs. This one, because that's the question there. So why don't we call this meeting to order? But before that, can we get somebody to take to take any minutes, any notes whatsoever? Can we get a volunteer? I'll do it. I'll do it. Keep it moving. Keep it going. All right. Thank I you. appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, your uh, co chair will your co chair will be taking minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we la uh, let me well, let's we are calling this meeting to order at eight oh six p.m. Seven. Okay. I mean, oh my, watch is an hour fast. Seven oh six p.m. We are calling this meeting to order, and uh, I want to welcome yeah. everyone for our last meeting for the season. My understanding, after talking with the uh manager the district manager that it we will be going on hiatus until september and if we want to the idea of doing any more work in between uh, between now and september this is something i'm going to explore uh he suggests that i speak to the chair of the board to see how if anybody has the time and willing to do some work between those two months okay uh Second point, we're going to start with the presentation, and we have no. We're supposed to do a roll call. No, no, no. I understand that. I understand that. But I'm, I'm just finishing with the introduction, and then uh, we'll have. There was a presentation for SBP that we are. We want to put it, move it forward, uh, to do it right after the presentation from the ten person art watch. So let's admit more people. Okay, so the next step will be the roll call. Do you have uh, the list of the committee members to see who's present, who's not present? I do not. Uh, Julia, do you have it? I do not. All right, let me I, see I, I could share my, I could share my screen. And why don't you do the roll call since you can see it on your end and then I'll just, I'll just oh, make a okay. notation. All right. So let me do that. Just give me a minute. Okay, here's roll call. Nicholas Salmono, committee chair present. Julia Bryant? Present. Maina Legute? Maina, present. My, oh, it's Maina, I'm sorry, Maina. Brenda hawkins Pagan. Present. Uh, 
Einzelbinder? No. Jerome Kraft? Say again. Jerome. Doctor, Doctor oh, Kraft. Jerome. Jerry. No, no. Jerry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone will call. Zizia Morgan? No. David Romeo? Present. And are uh, you here? Thank you. Wiley Aldipsy. Uh, okay, that's the committee members. That's the end of all calls. Okay, good. Let's move on to what's the next? With Ethan. Oh, okay. Okay. I think the next uh, is the public comment presentation and then followed by public commentary. Actually, I'm looking at the minutes and it says we are supposed to approve the last minute meetings. Oh, yes, minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah, then okay. I, yeah, let's, yeah, let's approve the minutes. Uh, I don't know. Everybody saw the minutes. Do you, do you want to have any addition, deletion, and changes? Did you get the did you all get the minute copy of the minutes? Yes. Yeah, it was attached think, to the yeah. Yeah, invitation. Okay. Did yes. anybody have okay, go ahead. I wasn't sure about the spelling for while Aldisby. I believe that's someone who's was listed previously as a part of the right. Minute. And they're not here today either. So it's I don't know. Yeah, it's not here today either. No. Is that okay, her check with the Go ahead. Nicholas, is that person on our on your list? Oh. Nicholas on yes, your list. On list. Yes, okay. it is on my list. And do you see that it does it match with the minutes, the spelling? I is think correct? it matched with the minutes from the way I saw it. It, 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 it did. Okay. Okay, so we can take yeah, that I part. I think you had it correct. I think you had it correct. All right. The so spelling I'll, was correct. I'll send it back to you guys with the correction. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, other corrections? Okay, no. I think, I think, I think mine idea did a fantastic job with the minutes. So, it was quite accurate. Yes, it was a lovely job. Reflective of what happened at the last meeting. So, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes. A second. All right, so, uh, motion was. Uh, made by who made the motion you did Liz. oh no no i was as a as the uh, facilitator so somebody else is supposed to make the motion okay i motion to accept the minutes okay, okay. Motion minor. To accept the minutes by minor second by uh, julia mm -hmm. all in favor aye aye Aye. By acclamation. All, all opposed? Abstention? Okay, motion carried. So let's go to the next item on the agenda, which is the presentation. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite uh, the representative from the 10% to identify as him or herself. And, can Br uh, can Brenda introduce him. them? Would that be okay? Yes. Uh, Brenda? Brenda, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Brenda, I know she's connected uh, with uh, ISVP. Um, I'm talking about the other. Oh, I'm sorry. I, um, my, okay. my mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, yes. The second one. Yes. Okay. It's a uh, 10% the library. I think it was. Uh, is the person is the person from the ten percent art project present at this time? Yes. Hi. Good evening. I'm David Mandel from Department of Cultural yes. Affairs. Uh, I also right. wanted to uh, welcome uh, Nalia from Brooklyn Public Library, who was just going to say a couple couple things about the library project itself, and that'll lead into what we're going to say about the art. Perfect. That's Thank you so. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. 
Uh, Nyla Rosario here with Brooklyn Public Library. Um, as you know, um, the library, um, we are in the design phase of a construction project. Um, the schedule, uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, fell a little off. So I will be back to the community board to present um, a timeline. Um, today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about uh, the percent for art project and the details um, that go for that. Um, but just want to let you know that the renovation um, that we expect to go is going to be uh, a comprehensive interior and exterior renovation. It's going to include a grades to um, uh, all the uh, parts of the building. Um, and we're gonna also provide um, an expansion that we're really, um, we're really gonna hope it's gonna um, uh, improve the library while really staying true to the building's historic character. Um, so um, today we're just gonna talk about the, um, the art project and focus on that. And then um, as we get more details for the timeline of the construction project, we'll make sure to share that um, with the community boards, um, either the um, general board meeting or at uh, executive committee meeting. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so today the focus will only be on, on the percent for our project. And with that, I'll pass it over to the Department of Cultural Affairs that uh, they're gonna introduce the project. Thanks. Which building is this you're making reference to? Eastern Parkway. Okay. Eastern, Eastern Parkway. Parkway. Yep, this is the Eastern Parkway Library Project. Granami Plaza? Uh, Eastern Central Parkway. Library. Uh, no, the and Eastern Parkway Library on Schenectady. Uh, Schenectady and Eastern Parkway. Connect yeah, so it's the Schenectady and Eastern okay. Parkway. And like I said, I'm I'll have more details Eastern on the Parkway. capital project. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, if there's any questions regarding the, um, the construction, um, I could answer them um, later, I guess. With that, I'll pass it over to uh, the Department of Cultural Affairs. All right, go ahead, Mr. Mendel. Thank you. And thank you again for having us tonight. We're so happy to be here sharing this exciting project with you. And um, I'll just be very quick so we can get to the good part so you can meet um, Oasa and see uh, what she has in the works for you. Um, but uh, Percent for Art, uh, and I'll acknowledge that there's some other of the agency partners here, Department of Design and Construction, um, Brooklyn Public Library. So uh, if there are other questions, you know, we'll have some some folks who might be able to help answer that. But we're here tonight to talk about the artwork component of the uh, library branch. Uh, Percent for Art is the name of the program administered by the Department of Cultural Affairs. Percent for Art is a law that was established in 1982, establishing that 1% of eligible capital projects will go towards the creation of public artwork. And public artwork as Department of Cultural Affairs defines it is the intersection of art, the community and the public space. And so all three of those need to uh, come together to create a successful project, uh, both in how the arts created and the process. And you know that's one of the reasons why we come to the community board and engage with the community to let you know what's happening um, and opportunities to engage with the artist and the work as it's being created. Uh, this project, as it was mentioned, uh, goes back actually to 2019 was when it was first started. Uh, we held two panel meetings in April and in August of 2019 when uh, a panel of community members, art experts, um, and members of the different design agencies and uh, city officials, uh, other members of the community reviewed the work of over 30 artists then narrowing it down to, to a select group of finalists, which then made detailed presentations from which we selected uh, Oisa DuVernay, who's here with us tonight. Um, and since then, she's been you know, working on her project. What you're gonna see tonight is what we call the conceptual design. So no artwork is, has been actually created yet. She's here to show you her ideas, where the project is going, um, how it's coming along. Um, hopefully you'll be uh, supportive of it. And if you are, you know, we're, we'd like you to uh, express that with either a vote or a letter of support coming, you know, from your main community board. Um, because later this month, it'll be going before the Public Design Commission, which then gets the final uh, approval where things will get going and we'll begin uh, creating the work of art. So um, 
that's come that's a, the next step after this meeting so um i'll stop talking now and i'm just going to turn it over to oasa she's a, a brooklyn-based artist she'll tell you a bit about herself and all about the project she's working on all right, thank you so much. Um, I would like to share my screen if possible. Okay. It, it's, Why did you do that? That's why I was working on that. Yeah, it's already oh. working, it seems. Okay. Is everyone able to see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. All right, Eastern Parkway Library conceptual design presentation. Uh, my name is Oasa DuVernay and I'm an artist and I will be proposing um, my concept for artwork at the Eastern Parkway uh, Library. It disappeared. I'm sorry? Yeah. The screen disappeared. It's just black. Is that oh. what you meant? We, huh. we saw one panel and then it went away. Okay, I'm not sure what happened, um, but I will try that again. Are we good? Yes. yes, we can see it. Excellent. Okay, so I like to make drawings, drawings that assert the existence of black and brown people in the past, present and future. Drawings that resist the exploitation of our body and our erasure from the accepted historic narrative. The figure on the right, a child, my child, standing statuesque, he's veiled and flanked by black power waves that frame the embodiment of the often ignored innocence of black children. These waves are activated as a protective layer, each side mirroring the other, directing the gaze back and forward, asserting its presence. I'm sorry. There we go. These are black power waves, a symbolic motif that articulates the necessity of our collective liberation that can only come through black liberation. Liberation expressed as waves of water speaks to the many ways that movements simulate a massive wave, at times condensed and accumulating, and when the time is right, dispersing, flowing through different channels, carrying new ideas. Which brings me to the Brooklyn High Art Machine. The Brooklyn High Art Machine is a collaborative, collaborative public art project that I do with a fellow artist and neighbor, Mildred Beltre. Mildred and I have lived in the same building in Crown Heights, Brooklyn for the last 22 years. About 11 years ago, we decided to take art supplies, tables, chairs, and healthy stacks outside during the summer to see what would happen if we used art as a community building tool. Over the years, this has looked like many things, including weaving messages to our neighbors into the fence um, of a bridge on our block. Through, through this process, we have learned that being outside and engaging in art making as black and brown people is to resist the criminalization of our bodies in public spaces. Being an artist in community, I have learned that being outside together can make a sidewalk a creative and generative space for everyone. Okay. That our neighbors look forward to walking down the block before or after a long day to reflect. And that time for reflection is a type of kindness we don't often afford each other in this city. But bright, bold words require that pause we don't usually give ourselves. So Reflections is the current title of the artwork proposal. So in the spirit of creating space for reflection and contemplation for the Eastern Parkway Library branch, I'm proposing a series of reflective portraits that honor authors of the African diaspora that also have roots in New York City. The portraits will be framed by black power wave motifs and plant life. Plant images will include both native and non-native plant species from the numerous regions of the African diaspora, grounding the portraits in a narrative of migration and history. Focusing on the African diaspora pays homage to the diversity of cultures and peoples of African descent currently living in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, their journey and making this community home. 
Here are two conceptual drawings using the authors, Audre Lorde and James Baldwin. I am proposing to make these artworks from, a mirror, from mirrored materials such as shatterproof glass and or metal in a variety of jewel tone colors. And now moving on to the project site in Brooklyn. Here's a neighborhood map indicating the location of the Eastern Parkway Library. And here's a site photo for context. And then here's the neighborhood map showing the existing library and proposed addition. And now we're inside of the library. The bright purple lines indicate the proposed location of the artworks on the mezzanine level outside of the teen zone. Community engagement. I have a three <laughs> community engagement plan, which begins with BPL librarians nominating BIPOC authors for the portraits to create a long list of 15, followed by an engagement with teen program participants who will review the author profiles created on the online platform called Millinote to select a top 10. And finally, selection will open up to the BPL members via the BPL website to select the final eight authors. Here's an example of an author profile created on Millinote using Audre Lorde. Here is a screenshot of the events information page for our community engagement with the BPL teen community. And here we have the proposed location for the artworks being proposed for the Eastern Parkway Library on the mezzanine level. And here is an additional perspective. For more information about this proposal um, and the general project, you can reach out to the Percent for Art program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will open the floor for questions. Do you have any questions? I, I do have a question. What is the timeline for the completion of this project? Nyla or Sinia can answer that. Yeah, I think we have Karina or Jomo from DDC on the line. Um, Jomo, do you want to take this one or do, would you like me to take it? So, okay, um, the expected timeline or uh, construction completion uh, is um, around 2023, um, but the schedule is um, shifting um, and changing. So right now we were trying to, um, we're trying to finish design by 2023 and, um, start construction by, well, finish construction by 2000, um, 2025. Hey, Karina, I'm um, sorry about this. this is Juma, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hey, hi guys. Yes, I'd also like to add um, any community impact, any um, adherence to vehicle or uh, pedestrian traffic, you will be notified um, of anything that goes down concerning construction. How will we be notified? We'll reach out to you via email, via the phone. Uh, the who? library, the library would also reach out to the community board. So what we usually do is that we'll either touch base with the district manager or the chairperson. And like I mentioned, once we have a more exact sense of what the timeline is, we will be coming back to the community board to present to the executive committee um, on what's happening. And since you guys are on hiatus for the summer, it looks like more than likely we'll we'll try to schedule to come to the September meeting to give a full update. Um, of the timeline right now. And like I mentioned, because of the COVID, this is one of the projects that were impacted by the timeline slipped a little. Originally, we were thinking of uh, starting this year, um, but that's not gonna be possible. Um, so like our partners at DDC mentioned, once we have a better sense of the timeline, we will be coming back to the board to give a full presentation on the construction project. Okay. Thank you for that. I have two questions. Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Can I be recognized? Yeah, okay, my, mm -hmm. my first question is, is that um, I think, David, you said that the original panel of 
uh, people who decided on the public artwork. There were two panels of people, uh, or two panels, two different panels for design. How were those panels um, designated? And were there people of color on those panels? The process is, uh, we have, there is uh, the, the artist is selected with a process of two panel meetings, right? Like, like uh, that's correct. Um, well, my question is who's on the panel? Who was on the panel? I can, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I could refer back to the minutes of, of the exact uh, members of the panel. Uh, what, who comprises the panel are both advisory and voting members. And prior to the panel meeting, there was a community board presentation where uh, volunteers were requested both to suggest names of panelists, names of artists, and names of community members who might want to attend the panel meeting to, to weigh in on the, uh, on the artists. Um, David, in the future, is it possible that you could weigh in and ask this community board for volunteers? I never heard anything about this, and I've been on this panel, I've been on this committee for two years. Yeah. So, uh, Hi, I'm um, going to interject here. Uh, my name is Kendall Henry. I'm the director of the program. Um, and, and, you know, David was not present at the time the panel was happening, so I, I, I was. Uh, to answer one of your first questions, yeah, most of the, the majority, I would say 90% of the artists showed and the panel were people of color. And, and that's always very important when we, when we do projects like this, particularly in communities of color. Uh, we did, um, we do reach out to both elected officials and community boards through a letter um, before we even begin our process and, and a, an initial meeting. And, um, and, and that did happen um, before prior to our panel. But we, we could get back to you in, ter in terms of who exactly was there, because uh, it was a while back and we can't remember. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to correct, the, I, I don't wanna correct the, the, the history. I mean, that, that's, that's done. But I, I, I want to be very clear I mean, and I, I'm saying this, you know, because I love my community. We have a very dysfunctional um, community board and that letter was never seen. And so had you sent it to us, it, you know, floor, wastebasket on somebody's desk till this minute, um, it's not fair. I'm just saying it's not fair. So um, keep in mind that when, you know, you say with all earnesty, and, you know, and I believe you, you know, that you tried, let's put it this way, everybody looking at each other, everybody sees each other. You know that the traditional ways of people in this city, picking people, has not served people of color. So I'm going to say that as a statement. Keep that in mind, Kendall. Okay, just keep that in mind. And it's, it's my, wait a minute, Brenda, before you go, and now I have a secondary, a second question while I'm at it. So, um, Osa, is, is your name Osa, Osa? It's Oasa. Oasa, Oasa. So, um, when you were talking about the panel, um, th that how you were going to select various parts of which people you were going to choose. Um, I noticed that all of the variations of how you were going to connect with people were going to be digital. This community is a low income community. It is a known fact that there are people in this community who do not have <coughs> smartphones. They do not have the digital um, intersection that you are asking to have. You know, something as simple as a paper ballot at the library it's like all the world of difference of getting everyone to be included. I appreciate that you, you know, that you've put a lot of input on how, but take it to the next level. I'm saying this very clearly, take it to the next level because it's a joke. It is just a joke where everyone, you know, and, and maybe it's, you know, and I'm not gonna call anybody out by their youth, but there are older people would want to have some input on it. And it has maybe nothing to do with their income level at all. They just don't have that wherewithal to have internet. And we and 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 if they can't, you know, they see it there and then it's like, oh go home and scan this. Scan it on what? On their Obama phone? Please. Let's be real. Let's let's because we're all looking at each other and we see each other. 
So let's try to treat each other to what we see as opposed to something traditional. Because again, as I said, what we've been doing is not been working. It's nice. It's friendly. It ain't working. And I ain't happy. Thank you. Um, if I may question? speak, if I can speak to the I community think, engagement. I think, I think Brenda, Brenda was uh, next. Who's next? Just, just oh, you want to answer that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who are you speaking to now? Okay. No, I'm I thought she wanted to, the library we represented you wanted to answer. If not, somebody wanted to Brenda. answer. If somebody wants to answer me, I'm very yeah, I just I'm, yeah, I'm I just wanna I just wanna address the community engagement component of the project. Um so first of all, um we did do the engagement. This is pre-COVID. Um it, and there was um notices and we were in communication with the community board. And I believe that we made a presentation to the general um, committee meeting. Um, and this was again, over a year and a half ago. Um, so I don't totally understand that we do need to come back and, and talk to folks, but there's also gonna be, um, we're continuing the engagement and we're planning engagement with um, youth that we're gonna be talking to. And we're also planning on doing engagement with um, older adults. So as we get more details about that, um, we'll let you know. And of course, everything is not gonna be digital. Um, our librarians are gonna be involved with this and we will have um, things at the library for folks to pick up to be a part of it. So it's it's not a all digital thing and we are aware and um, you know that there's a huge, um, you know, digital divide in the community and um, we're ready to try to address that. So I just wanted to make sure that I appreciate that. Aware of that. I appreciate it. And I also want to make note that you are here today. So I like, let's, let's, I, this is not something that I heard about. You are actually here. You brought a lot of people. I appreciate that. And that's duly noted. Thank you. Well, let's go to Ms. <coughs> Ms. Pagan. Okay, just two points. Point of information for Karina, okay, what is what is your position? Oh, sorry. Um, I am a project manager at the Department of Design and Construction. I tried to change the title, but um, yeah, it wasn't working out for me too well. Okay, you don't need to tell me because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and for Kendall and everyone, please, um, when we're speaking about uh, projects and engagement, etc., cetera, um, dates, Details, dates, times, when things were done. Things do change, people do change on boards, et cetera. So in order for us to access what was done sometime before COVID, we would like some more detailed information such as the dates when things occurred. Then we can ask for uh, uh, references and emails, et cetera, that the office managers, et cetera, may have access to and be able to share with us. So I appreciate everybody being here, but please keep in mind, details are of value. All right, thank you. Any other question? Uh, I have one more question. I think you may have touched on it. Uh, maybe, uh, what is in terms of engagement for youth in the local high school? Are there any plans to involve the youth in from the local community? using the schools? Uh, right now, we are working with um, the teens that are part of the, uh, the teen program at the library. So these are teens that come and they, they come to the Eastern Parkway Library for programming. So we're focusing on that. But if you have any connections with any schools um, that we could reach out to, uh, we'll definitely um, take it. Uh, so if you have any, any contacts um, that you can give us for any school, that's interested in being a part of this, um, we'll definitely consider that. But for right now, we're just working with the teens that participate um, in the libraries, um, libraries of Tomorrow program. And I don't know if you're aware, there's a robust teen program also at the Eastern Parkway Library, which they do video games and poetry and all that. Um, so we're starting off with, with those uh, youth first, uh, but we're open to addressing more folks. And the contact information for you, Nyla, Kendall, David, etc. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah. can definitely share it. I don't. I don't think there's a chat. I'm trying to share some information no, in the chat. There's no, so there's no chat. I'm not yeah. About that, but unfortunately, contact information. 
You got it. We can um, email the board um, and share all our right. contacts. Who at the board are yeah. we emailing? We need a central person, not, not anyone. So. so, yeah. So, usually what we do is we contact the district manager, um, and okay. then the district manager reaches out to the committees. Um, I believe you guys have a new chairperson this year. Is that right? A new district manager. And a new district manager. Yes, and yes. district manager and chairperson. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we'll um we'll make sure to share all the all the information with them. With the district manager. Yeah, I'm here and I will be looking forward to your information. Is that you, Great. Dante? Thank you. That is me. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you so oh, much. Khalid, you're here, right? Uh, well, yeah, I'm I'm here. Dante. I've, I've heard the conversation. I'm glad to, to see you. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. please send the information over to the district office, and as soon as we get it, we will forward it out uh, to the committee. We will do. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much. Dante, can you give me your full name? Uh, my name is Dante Arnwine. And I'm the new district, well, I guess maybe not new anymore. It's been three months, but I'm the district manager for CB9. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. And I know we're in touch with your team at the office. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure to get the information. Appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Okay, hey, is there any more question? And uh, we want to thank uh, Ten Person for Art for wonderful presentation. Uh, right now, we want to segue into RSVP and their presentation. So, if you guys are ready, Miss uh, Noel uh, Myers Powell, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure. I know. Um, well, first, I want to thank you all so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, my name is Noel Myers Powell. And I'm one of the volunteer managers for the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program. And I want to give a, a special thank you to Brenda Pagan, um, <laughs> who was able to help get me connected to all of you for this opportunity. So really appreciate it. I'm going to share my screen and I'm just going to pull up a brief slide deck. Okay. Okay, move this over. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. All right, great. So I just want to provide a little bit of information about who we are. Um, so as I mentioned, we're the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program. And a little bit about us, um, you know, we specifically work with older adults in New York City. So older adults, meaning 50, those who are 55 years of age or older. And really the biggest role I see about RSCP is that we're kind of a connector in the community. So we're constantly working with volunteers to help people who are looking for meaningful volunteer assignments in their community who come to us and say, you know, I want to find a way to get involved, to stay connected, to give back, to learn something new. Um, to maybe be a part of a team. And on, this, on the other end, we're always working with community-based organizations who are looking for volunteers to help support some of their programs or to bring in their energy and skills. So we're kind of in the middle, but we're you know, on both sides working with older adults who are looking for a volunteer opportunity. And on the other end, working with community-based organizations who are looking for some help on site as well. And so a little bit about us, you know, we are a national program. We're actually the New York City based RSVP and we're actually the original program. Um, but RSVP is a national program that falls under AmeriCorps Seniors. Some of you might be familiar with like AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps Vista. AmeriCorps Seniors is like the section of, of the agency that works with older adult volunteers. So you'll find other programs like foster grandparents and senior companions. This is where RSVP lives. And there's, you know, a little over 600 RSVPs across the country. But again, we're the one specifically for New York City. Our uh, local sponsor or kind of host organization here in New York is the Community Service Society of New York. And a little bit about CSS. CSS is a anti-poverty nonprofit organization that's been around for about 175 years. And so they're really crucial in the story of RSCP. They're actually the, um, the organization that started the program back in 1966, when it was a small pilot project here in New York. And it actually grew from that pilot project into this national program that it is today. And so our program, like I mentioned, we are the one for New York City, so it means we operate across the five boroughs. We have right now a little over 250 partners across the city. These are partners at different places like hospitals, food pantries, youth programs, um, et cetera, museums, things like that, where we place volunteers and connect them to volunteer in their communities. Um, and we have a network of about 2,300 active volunteers who serve at one or more of these organizations. And collectively, though last year was a little bit lower because of the pandemic, collectively volunteers serve about 400,000 hours collectively um, each year. And so even though last year was a little bit lower, we're still really proud that people found ways to be able to get back in, and, um, and stay engaged uh, throughout the pandemic, both in person in some cases and for most of them virtually from home. 
And so what kinds of things, you know, can volunteers do through RSVP? So there's a, there's a bunch. This is kind of a general idea. But you know, as I mentioned, we're, we operate across the five boroughs. These are some big areas. But just to give you some kind of tangible examples, you know, right now, because of COVID, it's kind of changed the way people approach volunteering in some ways. Um, we do have some virtual remote opportunities people are able to do from home. So we've had some volunteers who've been writing, you know, making cards for homebound seniors, some who have been doing friendly visiting Zoom calls or friendly visiting phone calls on the phone. We've had volunteers who have served as mentors for, you know, uh, young students or young adults who need career mentors. And again, this could be over the phone, video. Um, some have been, you know, have been trained to be financial coaches. Some have... Um, been doing clerical work or other type of support and then some have been going in person so we have a lot of our volunteers who have served at food pantry some have been you know garden volunteers some are able to do friendly visiting in person and so really you know there's more than there's there's more than just those couple of things but especially as um the vaccines are, are becoming more um available across the city and maybe the weather's getting nicer and there's more covid protocols at organizations a lot of our partners have been able to open up and adapt their programming for both again in person and stuff people can do from home and so there's a bunch of ways that we try to, you know, I use the word benefit or perks of being a part of RCP for our volunteers. But I look, I look at this as kind of there's a lot of ways that we say thank you because we realize that people can do, you know, whatever they want with their time. We really appreciate that people want to find ways to give back and, and, and again, to help out in their communities. And so there's a couple of perks that we <laughs> offer our volunteers. We offer a partial transportation reimbursement for volunteers. And so this is for um, if they're traveling to and from, so if they're volunteering in person, but we've also offered it to volunteers who are serving from home, even if they're making phone calls, because we realize, you know, that's using their electricity, their own internet, you know, their own personal devices. And so we still, you know, still feel like they still, you know, deserve that reimbursement, even if they're not traveling. Um, we have events throughout the year. We just actually had our um, annual Appreciation Academy, which is a week-long series of workshops that we offer for volunteers. Again, usually it was in person where we had food and, and, and such, but uh, this year we did it virtually. And so we have like writing workshops, meditation workshops. Um, we also did like a, a recipe workshop where we had someone from the green markets talk about what's in season and what you can do with the vegetables that are in season. So we do things like that. Um, we have something called the Supplemental Accident Insurance Coverage, which is a long name, but it's not health insurance. They don't pay it in, into it. They don't sign up for it. It doesn't replace their health insurance. What it is is that, you know, if some type of personal injury happens while they're volunteering or while they're traveling to and from, we're able to offset some of the out-of-pocket costs. So the most common things, we really don't have many of these things happen, but if they're like at a food pantry or one of our sites and they break their glasses, you know, they first utilize their health insurance. Let's say it doesn't cover the whole, you know, a whole amount. They'd reach out to our program and we'd be able to see how much we can cover to, to continue to replace their glasses. So that's how that particular perk works. Um, we offer awards. So each year we have a annual volunteer recognition, which is a big breakfast. You know, we have keynote speakers. We celebrate our big, you know, our large network of volunteers. And here we also give out awards for lifetime achievement awards, as well as those who've been nominated by the partners for doing just outstanding work over the past year. And then finally, you know, being a part of RSVP, it's, it's a great way, especially for our volunteers who have talked about how, you know, they're really looking for ways to be a part of a team or to be connected to their community, to be a part of, you know, a very local network wherever they're serving, but then also citywide and then also across the country as well, seeing that RSVP is a national program. And one of my favorite kind of perks about our program that I think makes us different is that, you know, we really are big on the one-on-one -on -one because we realize that trying to find a volunteer opportunity in New York, trying to, like trying to find a restaurant. I mean, you probably go into Google and you type in volunteer opportunities in New York City and you can imagine the thousands of things that come up and, you know, how do you know which ones are up to date, which contacts are still the same, you know, is, is the funding for that program even still there? All that information may or may not be outdated online. And so, we, every volunteer that we we talk to them each individually do a, a 45 minute to an hour interview and we can always do we still talk to them afterwards on the phone um, right now we're doing phone and video but in the past before COVID we did it in person um, they were able to come into the office once we return to the office we'll probably return to all three options um, just to give people variety depending on what they're most comfortable with but in these sessions you know it's a chance for us to connect with the volunteer, talk about their interests, their skills, you know, what would they like to do? What do they definitely, you know, don't want to do and use their time to spend? What's their schedule look like? You know, how involved do they want to be? And then we talk through a couple of our partners that we think might be a good fit. We share them in the information and then we help make a warm introduction to our direct contact at that partner. And then even after we, we kind of do that referral, we still follow up. Like I'm constantly following up with the volunteer, with the partner to make sure that they're getting connected. And if there's any barriers in communication, just again, making sure that they're talking so the older adult can find, you know, a, a great opportunity, but also so the partner can, again, continue to meet really wonderful volunteers. 
And kind of the last benefit, and this is going to where I did a short slide deck for today, but the last thing I want to end off on, because I know that this particular committee is focusing on parks and recreation. And when I think about those types of spaces, you think about, you know, healthy lifestyles and wellness and things to improve both your physical and mental health. And, you know, with volunteering, it's been proven, this is one step, but it's really been shown that there's a positive correlation for older adults and volunteering, both for your physical health, mental your social, you know, decreasing social isolation, increasing cognitive skills, and again, learning something new, engaging with people, and really building that social network, which, you know, many of the people that I work with have talked about how, you know, they've retired, and now you have, to, you know, now you're looking at this next part of your life and figuring out how do you want to spend your time developing new, you know, new social networks, new things to be involved with, and that's it's such an important time, and so volunteering is one really wonderful way to do it, and so I'm, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity to provide, provide you know, a little overview, but really, you know, to reach out to to this community board to see if there's opportunities. I know um, Brenda probably mentioned uh, a flyer that we have different ways that we can share it with, you know, older adults in this community and, and get, again, give them an option if they'd like to get involved and find a, again, find a way to get involved in their community. So I'm going to end it off there. I'm going to leave my information up, though. And if anyone has any questions, I'm, I, you know, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Any for Ms. Noel? For oh, Noel? Uh, Ms. Noel, uh, I also participated in uh, the some of the meeting of our health committee. A lot of the population you're working with, mm -hmm. they are very involved with them. I would like to extend, uh, I'm going to try to reach the, the chair of that committee. Francisca Leopold. As a matter of fact, she's planning at this time in health fair, where okay. I think the organization would be a great asset for that day she's doing that. So uh, I will reach out to you and reach out to her and put the two of you in, uh, okay. in contact for sometime this summer. She's putting together a health fair for a couple of clubs within the board. And I think uh, and <coughs> one of her concerns are the seniors. And I think she, this is information she will be glad to be able to use or an orga another organization she can collaborate with. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, this is not a question. Uh, one, I agree with Chair Almanor 100%. Uh, we, we will definitely contact Chair Leopold. Can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, so I was saying that, you know, I definitely think that your organization would benefit um, working with uh, Chair Leopold um, and her committee. So we're definitely going to put you in contact with her. Uh, I do have a quick question. Um, how many volunteers do you have um, in your organization right now that are from CB9? So that I don't know, but I can find that information out. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have that information prepared. I know we have um, a bunch in Brooklyn, but I'm not sure exactly for CB9, but I, I definitely can ask out to my director and get that information. Yeah, that, yeah, that's absolutely phenomenal. I, I, you know, I, I think that that number is important, right? You visited this community board for a reason. So whatever that number is, uh, our goal is to make sure that number increases. So you, you, know, you have our contact information, you know how to find the board. Uh, I will do my due diligence and do whatever I can as a district manager uh, to be able to assist uh, this community board and, submit and uh, assist you uh, in this endeavor. I think that you have a phenomenal organization and I look forward to working with you in the future as well. well thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, are there any questions, follow up or comments? So we could move on to the agenda. I appreciate you coming and um, Brenda enjoys your organization. She talks about it all the time. So we're, you know, we're happy that you finally got here. She lobbied hard and fast. And it sounds like, you know, something that would be helpful for many people. So thank you. Thank you again for, you know, I know you didn't have to leave your house to do it, but you know, you did have to, you know, part of your evening. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, again, th thank you guys so much. And thank you so much, Brenda. I know she <laughs> did a lot of outreach for me, so I really appreciate it. Brenda's one of our borough liaisons. Uh, one of the many things I know she's involved with a lot of things. She's one of our borough liaisons helping us to really, you know, because we have a large network. But one of the concerns I've had over the past year, especially with COVID, is that I would like to get more representation. I'm from Brooklyn originally. I moved during the pandemic, but I'm from Brooklyn originally, different part of Brooklyn, um, the southern part um, near Coney Island. So all the way down by the water, but 
I really would like to see more, you know, our outreach and, and awareness of RRCP as a resource for seniors throughout the borough. So, you know, especially I know in this area, there's so much going on in this part of Brooklyn and there's, I think there's so much value there and so many wonderful people. And so um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to speak to you guys, some of the change makers in the community. And so any way that we can help get connected to seniors, I'm definitely game for that. Thank you for coming. All right, when we will follow up. Absolutely. Okay. Because I'm, I'm a senior myself. I'm past 55. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I have one one quick question. Um, sure. Uh, wh what relationship or, or how's your connection with DIFTA? So DIFTA, I don't think we know. So we don't have a, um, like we don't work with them on anything in particular. I don't know what DIFTA is. Can you, before you go any further. What's uh, DIFTA is the Department for the Aging. So I believe like the, the, the director, so the director for our program, program director is Deirdre Ryan. And so I believe that she goes different. She's part of various boards and meetings. And so I know she's mentioned that she knows some people at DIFTA, but I don't right. think we, we don't actually like, we don't work with them necessarily hand in hand on any projects in particular. Right. Okay. Understood. Thank you for that. Oh, but good question though. Okay, are we moving okay. on? Um, oh, yes, we're moving on now. We would be like before, to move okay, to the next we meet, the wait a minute. Before we go, we skipped a couple of things before we um to get the um, RSVP. The agenda now we... There you go. Yes. Okay, so we have the survey. Can we just knock this survey well, out? I wanted to move quickly to that because what we skipped was public commentary, but I think the two presentations cover that unless we have anybody have anything that they would like to say uh, for let's say the next minute or two so we could move to the public back alliance survey completion. I have a question, public commentary. Yeah. This is a public meeting. What what happened to the chat? Why is the chat not? Oh, no, no, uh, oh I don't know if Mr. Awan is still there. Might I will answer that. that. I will answer that. The what? chat is something that we're looking at to see if it's an extremely useful tool. Now, I get it. I know everyone, almost everyone says that it's an extremely useful tool uh, because organizations and people who come in can share their information. I completely see how it's a useful tool. But with respect, in some of our committee meetings, it turns into um, a tool that is really abused and people get off topic and, you know, they're making fun of each other and all this sort of nonsense that's not committee business so it was my decision to remove the chat let's look at okay let's look at um the meetings going forward is the chat useful is the chat not useful so you know who knows what the component of the community board will be um after the summer hiatus but you know we can look at the information and if it's something that the community board really feels that um um, that they want, and if, of course, if we're still doing virtual, if it's something that the community board feels that they really think is a great um, asset um, to doing uh, the, the to doing the board's business, that is the key. Because once it gets out of control, then the meetings take forever, and then people are looking for information in the chat and they can't find it. So you know, if if there's a point in time over the summer where you know there's a clear um, consensus that hey, this is the chat that we need, then you know we'll make that decision to uh, reinstall the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite Thank clear you. that, but let's move on. Okay, so um, is it possible that I can share my screen and because um, then I can get the survey up and we can just bang this through because this has been I lingering. Think so. For... Thanks, I want to get this over. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, am I? Okay, sure. Uh, hold on, let me get the right one. Here it is. Okay. So this is yep. this is the information that the it, it came to us as a digital piece of information in February. It is now June, um, and so the first question is who we are. I, I just filled that in. You know, uh, what committee of interest does this organize organization represent? So I'll just put in that we're you know Parks and Recreation. Can I break? This is going to be tough. Okay, so we're Parks and Recreation and Culture. I'll, I'll clean it up, okay? Okay, and Culture. 
Brenda, Brenda's going to help me because she's an excellent speller. Um, does the organization, okay, does this organization engage with Prospect Park? So now that's actually one of the questions that I have is like, this is Parks and Recreation and are we having any kind of plans to deal with Prospect Park in the future, yes or no? I think it's yes, because that's the role of this committee to do. So we have to formulate, sit with them and formulate plans how we could collaborate with them, absolutely. Okay, but it, I, I have to say that in the two years that I've been here, not one word other than going to their meetings has anybody done anything. So, but I will say yes and we'll just keep it moving. Okay. Okay. And okay, if yes, so what are we doing? Um, cultural, not, I, I think I what the answer- to be determined, to be determined. Okay, I'm gonna go here at the bottom where it says to be determined. Okay. Okay. So what are the act? Okay. So this is exactly where I want to get to. What are the act? What are the, what, if no, what are the barriers of our access? Does this community, does, do we have any feeling that um, CB9 or people from CB9 are having problems getting in and out of the park or any kind of access to the park? No. We don't have that information. We have to conduct a survey to find out. This is a survey, Nicholas. No, no, I'm saying a separate survey from CB9. Well, let me say something. Uh, I just came become the chair midway, so there's a lot of information that I'm not aware of. So I don't know what happened from before, but it's all done now. I think we have to start from where we are now and move on. And I okay. think that should be part of the plan of what we're looking for for all Okay, so why don't we write, why don't we write to be determined? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But the willingness is there to really collaborate and participate with uh, the, the parks department, Prospect Park in particular, and the, all the other parks yeah. within the community board. Okay, we, cool. Uh, hello, hello. Brenda, go ahead. When you talk about access, barriers to access Prospect Park, it is not just a park with green grass. It is a park that has venues in it that people have to actually pay for in order to make use of. So those are the things we need to keep in mind when we're talking about access and programs, et cetera. There used to be that a lot of things were free and now they cost money. We had a meeting recently, two or three meetings ago, and that was one of the things that was brought out when they showed us the rendering for the new entrance and the amphitheater and the bathrooms and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believe it was uh, Boyd, Alicia Boyd, who brought out the fact that oftentimes these things start out as being free to the community or general public. And then they end up being hoity-toity venues that it costs a lot of money to rent in order to use these uh, points in the park. So we need to make note of that. And okay, I'm putting it. I'm putting it in. Okay, in what ways does Prospect Park benefit your community? So all why don't these. we all, all of these? Quality of, of, of life all means you have access to green space. You have access to clean air. You don't get clean air just because we live in. It, it takes trees and grass and plants and bees and all of that kind of stuff to make clean air and to keep it clean. And I believe uh, was just mentioned with uh, Noel, that's a part of what we need to be healthy. You know, right. people are selling off air rights on tops of buildings and blocking views, et cetera. That's not healthy for New Yorkers in the densely populated area that we live in. We need those green spaces. We need open air. We need animals, trees, birds, plants, bees. I like fruit. We need bees for fruit. Concerts. We need concerts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Like how, okay. How, okay. We're on to seven. How can the park better serve the community? I think to piggyback on what Brenda said is make sure that um, amenities are free. And that anybody, I, I, I guess, I, where? Go ahead. I'm sorry, Brenda, say again. 
and that community members, residents are aware of what, what access is free. What do they have access to? There are a lot of people who live in a small, in a four block area. They go to the grocery store, they go you know, to the bus, they come back and repeat the next day and so forth and so on. And I have neighbors who are just recognizing that the Botanic Gardens is there and there is free access to the Botanic Gardens. They, they've lived in the community for years and yet they don't even know what's inside the Botanic Gardens, that there are uh, cultural events, music, dance, et cetera, going on in the Botanic Gardens that they can have access to on a regular basis without paying anything. So we need to make our community aware that these are there and they are there for them to use. Okay, so let's say we need, better. We need, a, we need an awareness program from the Prospect Park Alliance say, say, so the community is better informed what's available. Nick, Nick a better, I'm missing, you're breaking up. A better what? Uh, uh, awareness program awareness. to make the community more awareness program. It's public relations. Yes, yes. And again, it cannot be digital as the you know, main and, and primary focus because there are so many people who are seniors, senior level, who they have email, but they don't know what their email is. So it's pointless to say digital and say right. you're reaching out because you're not really reaching out. When you, once you know that people of a certain age do not have laptops, smartphones, computers, whatever it is, then you have to reach out in paper ways, posting things. Well, you know, you know um, buyers. Uh, who's that speaking now? I'm sorry, this is David Romeo. I, I, I was thinking that, you know, if in the summertime or, you know, like the, the warmer months, the Prospect Park Alliance could put out a newsletter of the events, you know, um, that are do. free. They do. You know, the yeah, problem they is they do mm -hmm. put a newsletter at, but it's in the middle of the library. It's in the middle of the park. Yep. So you have to Why go to the park to, to get, get the news, <laughs> to get the newsletter to find to out get the newsletter to find, find so what's like, what's going on in the park, right? Like like it only speaks to people who are already engaged in the engaged. park, right? Yeah. yeah. So so, uh, but David, that's a very good point. I'm gonna write. How should so I write the that? Question is. What is the reach out to the house of worship in the area where most people are? Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily reach well, out. Well, listen, you, you know, once they have a newsletter, they can make that newsletter available. Let's, you know, put some in the libraries, put some in the schools, you know, I mean, have them have these newsletters all over the place. Okay, you know, well, let, okay, let, let's just tell them that they need to reach out because it's not, I, I can hear already. It's not an, a finite amount of, of newsletters. You see what I'm saying? Right, and, and right, think of, right. And think, okay, and think, okay I, I was in public relations and so, and I actually did have a newsletter. So part of the problem is if you have a newsletter, then mm -hmm. maybe you can help, let us help you distribute them. Agree. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because, agree. Okay, so, so I, I will write that. Please reach out to us to help you. Right, yeah. Fair enough, that's fair. Okay, let's let's keep it moving. Okay, eight. What is on eight? Okay. One more thing. They need yeah, signs actually in the park, they need signs. Yes. Once, because I I'm in the park five days a week. And there are times people ask me, where is such and such? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah, they, right, they refer yeah. to the neither me. I mean, I'm, I'm in the park every other day or every day, but there are no That's signs. I'm and sorry? Okay. The park to know where everything is. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. My, Mina and, and, and everybody else, um, I'm, I'm, I actually went to the park, um, park, Prospect Park Alliance uh, meeting, Park and I was going. To, I was just going to bring this up, and the signage was the thing that I was my my take home was that mm -hmm. they said that they were going to do better signage 
um, because what happens is people get in the park, they don't know where they are, they don't know what the rules are, and then people call the police on them. Mm -hmm. So, so there are places where your dog could run free, and it's perfectly legal for your dog to run free. Other people don't know it because the signage is bad, and then they call the cops on each other. So, I was like, really? So, um, so they said that they were going to do better signage because if they had better signage, then all you have to do is just point like, I'm in the legal space. You need to leave me the hell alone. So um, just, just take that, you know, we've covered that. Um, and going back to signage, I'm sorry. If they could have some sort of sign when the water fountains are out to make them aware that they're out or not working or flooded, that would be useful. One of my pet peeves. <laughs> right, you're, you're, you're going to the uh, to the fountain and only to find out this one does not work. Mm -hmm. Is and that not what you're, it's not telling it's, anyone about it and not knowing who to contact. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. I'll contact, but I don't know who to contact because there's nothing there that tells you who to contact. Mm -hmm. And when they were here at the last meeting, they said that you know they told us who works on what, but we don't have contact information to say who, you know, little things like that. Like, okay, I saw that the water fountain wasn't working today. Who do I contact? So more and more. Right. right, because one of the things that they were gonna do is put these signs up and then you were gonna be able to scan it and then you would know who you were supposed to call. And I said, well, that doesn't work with an Obama phone because mm -hmm. people, you know, even if you have service, you're not going to use all of your service for the park, you know. You know, you you've got a certain amount of minutes. You're going to use it up to get up, par yeah. up parks. <sighs> okay. Maybe Let's that can on. have. Not my interrupt, and maybe that can have a report line when certain amenities are of service or people. Okay. When. Uh, okay. And that report that line. Just don't know what well. it is. They might actually. Yeah. Have one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a report line. Yeah. And an important number. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. When things are not working. When... But repairs, needed repairs. I think a, a report slash repair number. <laughs> report slash. Repair, repair number. Yeah. Repair number. Okay. Right. Okay, so how best, okay, we're almost coming to the end here. It's not that much more. Um, um, how best can the Alliance keep you updated and the news newsletter well, attend all, all of, of the above? The above. <laughs> that was what our discussion was about. All of the above. Well, you know what? Let's remember, all of the above means none of you <laughs> are going to get the information because that's a broad and general, ubiquitous they. You need to give them a specific contact person, persons, you know, point so that just like I was, that's why I asked that question when the other people were here earlier, because you keep saying we, we sent an email to them. We keep in contact with the, who are they? Who are them? That's what that's I said. I said the traditional, name, name. the traditional channels are not working. I'm going to write that here too. But you know, we have to be really clear and specific. I no longer have the luxury of just wasting time on well, maybe we'll get it. Maybe. Drop off. That's okay, wait a minute. What's it say? So names. where would you, okay, if you're going to drop off the newsletter, where would you say? Drop off the newsletter where? CB9 office. Give it, who is in charge in the office there? Dante R. Wine. Dante, if we drop, if they dropped it off, could you get it distributed? What could he you do? He have it distributed. He can uh, tell people they, here to so, come pick up. Well, right, I, so, I don't go to I don't go to the CB nine office unless I have a meeting. Come on. I don't either, but if they had some money for me, I'd go. <laughs> okay, Dante. Dante, weigh in. Come on. Dante, yeah, weigh so, in. So. If <laughs> <laughs> Dante, do you know Let him speak. I can come let the young man speak. Come on, let the young man speak. Getting his microphone ready. Thank you. Okay, so yes, if they're dropping off a large quantity, we can definitely hold it in the office. Um, you know, anybody can come in, grab it, and go. Um, but with the newsletter, you know, a lot of people don't read newsletters, so that. I, I, 
flyer. You know what? Yeah, okay. I, I I agree with um. I think it's Miss Pagan that just said flyering. If you if you're creative with the flyering and you do it the right way with less words, it will catch people's attention yes. and then they can get the information that they need. I agree. With oh, you. I see what you're saying. Definitely. Okay. okay All so, right. Fair enough. Okay. So we'll drop off new newsletters and flyers to the right. CB9 office. Right. And, and, and with that being said, you know, you know, even if we have to look at other facets, so let's say they drop them off and they drop off a large quantity, I'll make an arbitrary number like a thousand. You know, we can also work with our community partners like the libraries, you know, and, uh, and these other um, entities and take them there. Like it doesn't just necessarily have to be CB office. It could also be other entities. Well, so, well, that, you know. that is exactly what my question is. Do you honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you're telling me a tale, but right. do you have funding? Like, okay, let's say on Monday, because mm -hmm. this is the problem. Somebody sends a flyer or a newsletter. You know what? Number one, it's going to be late, late, late. So whatever's in there, you're going to have to move fast mm -hmm. to make it useful. Do you have? Do you have like young people? Do you have any kind of staff besides you know Mia and and the people who work in the office? No, the only people in the office right now are just myself, right. Mia, and Khalid. We're hoping to get you know interns in the summer, but you know we're the ones that get paid so it's our job so you know at the end of the day it falls on our shoulders so i wouldn't okay, but necessarily count interns delegate okay, but but let's say okay let's say in a more traditional time mm -hmm. that you would you would think that that would be something that an intern could take care of yes i do okay so i mean if we're directing somebody we're we're not directing them to do something in the past we're directing them to do something in the future. And in the future, there will eventually be interns. And okay, so, and they could do CB9. Brenda, give us another place where you think that they could drop them off at. No, I'm not going to give you Because I think that they do it. They no. do drop them off at the library already. Here you go. So that's okay. a redundant. All right. So well, I was using the library as an example, but other okay. entities within the community. Like they have an adult daycare Specific. center okay. on, on Empire Boulevard. So oh, sorry. okay. Go ahead. Adult okay. daycare centers. Okay, listen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brenda. Okay, it is not necessarily going to be the job of Dante, Khalid, and Mia to distribute this, these thousand, you know, bulletins, flyers, whatever. That is an access point. We know that in our community, we have libraries, churches, et cetera. Uh -huh. An email can be sent. Even if it's once a month that we get a newsletter, we know it's coming on the first Monday of every month, then an email can be sent out. The person at the library who's named as the person responsible for flyers can come and pick up their 400 flyers. The Good. person at Antioch Good. Baptist Church can Good. come and pick Good. up 100 Good. flyers. Good. But Good. first, we have that central point of contact. Dante, Khalid, Mia can send some emails out not run yeah. up and down the avenue, distribute the flyers, <laughs> but send the email out, you know what I'm saying, to reach out to other people who can send one person to come right, good. up their good. flyers. And good. Okay, Brenda, Brenda, now, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm, I'm a forward, person, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm the person, I'm the person who, I, they ain't coming. That's you can not send that person. email. That's I, not the case. I, I, That's you need a name of a person. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know Don't what? If keep I, going backwards, okay. let's move I'm not forward. Saying, okay, let's let's have the best hope. Okay, that's, that's how we're right. gonna do it. Let's move forward. Okay, but it's, okay. It's, and if send, you send us to to make this happen. And if I can get a flyer and put it in my building lobby, then so can one other person. And uh -huh. even those one other persons becomes a thousand people. Okay, okay, we're gonna send emails to community action, community actors. Mm -hmm. Specific community actors. Baby, if you don't tell me who, I don't know who, say it. You don't need to name them, but I want it to be clear. This is not just we send something to the library. You have to have the person of contact 
in the library. You can't just send a box to the library or a box to the community board and expect them to figure out what to do, when to do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to be specific in what we're asking for and what we want to happen. We have to be specific and clear. Otherwise, nothing happens. All right, um, I, I, no, I agree with that, right? But you know, we we have resources. We just had somebody from the library speak to us Hello. about about their plans of you know what they're going to do at Schenectady. We could probably talk to that young lady, and she could turn us on to a contact person who could give us the names for all the contact people in our community board that we could you know call and come to pick up or you know these flyers when we do get them. You know, I mean, we we you know we have to find. Okay, a way why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? With, okay, this is just our survey, and it's a good survey because now we're actually having a full conversation about something like this. Mm -hmm. Why don't we, at a later point in time next year, have a subcommittee? I know subcommittees are dangerous in parks and recreation, but let's have a <laughs> subcommittee, and we just make a you know spend you know a couple hours. Everybody come with their little you know, your telephone, your contact list and say, this person should be contact, that person should be contact. And this is the list. And then we give it to the Prospect Park Alliance and say, this is who you should be sending your newsletters to and not to the library, not to the, you know, whatever. And we go to give them, okay? We will, okay, I'm gonna write, we will, we will provide you a list. How's that? Anybody saying yes or no? I say yes. Because we yeah. need to know who to contact Mina, people. Mina, I'm not hearing from you. What you're saying? We yeah. should know who the contact people are. As the community board, isn't that our job to be able to inform, to educate, and spread this information to constituents, residents, community members? It, it, that's the purpose of the community board, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm just lost. Like, I'm not sure. We'll, we, will provide, we will provide you a list of contacts. Mm -hmm. In September. <laughs> and okay, keep it. Listen, it's T in the next line. What'd you say? And then when you get to the next line, fix the word. On the next question? No, activities. You're talking about activities in the next. In the next, at the end of number nine. Okay, let's and go. Activities. Okay. T How does can the Alliance receive? Me? Okay. So what is it? Online. Okay. The last what word. Is on the line with number uh, nine. A-C-T-I-V-I-T-I-E-S. T, -I -T, -I -E -S. T right? I. T I V. Back up I one space. Where are you? Oh, you're right. T, right, I. I. Just I Thank right there. Right, that's it. Thank okay. you. David. Thank you. Okay. So how can Alliance, how about, Okay, I already go to the meetings and I bring and I bring back their information. How's that? Do we need, you know, because they're not talking to us per se. So do we need any? Do we need any closer contact with them? I think no. we should prioritize their list. <laughs> what What is the number one thing that they should do? And it's not online service. They need to know. How is the, how best can the alliance receive feedback from your group on parks? I, I would I would say let's invite them for a meeting in September yes, and the, yeah. next year for the next uh, season. Between yeah, I agree with that. And, um, I, you know, yeah. I, agree. I, I think and I can I also add to that that their contact should not be one meeting that they attend per year. Their contact should be regular and ongoing. They are, do, they are constantly at work with one project or another. They should be in contact with us at least on a monthly basis. But it should- well, We only meet monthly. So why don't we just say um, monthly? That's how we're gonna keep in aware we can't let them say, well, we came to your meeting last year. We okay. meet every month. Yeah, no. Okay, I agree with that. invite them to come come to our well, TV9 Parks um, and Recreation. Go ahead. 
monthly meeting. What about they, you know, um, creating a liaison to meet with, with our community board? Absolutely. Okay, you have a liaison to meet with our community board. Um, and that Someone who's already a, here and who's connected with them already or who wants to be or is willing to be. Right. And and, in our meetings and liaise. Yeah. Know? Yeah, you know what I mean? Because that would be a conduit for information coming from them, and we send an information to them. We have okay. one person, you know what I mean? So we need to And then know, we would know when the newsletter's out, and then we would know right, what the right. next thing is. I mean, that, uh, that, that, that person, is on to you know, okay. solve one of the problems. But don't put okay. the responsibility on that person to, to know everything if they miss No, meeting. no, 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 no. We can't do that. That's that not fair. My sentence. That's not true. No. <laughs> but, but, okay, but Brenda, clear. already Dante and I already, Dante, because it was Khalil before, but Dante, you go to the um, Prospect um, Park liaison meetings already, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I've, been, yeah been. I, I've, I've, I've been to one, yes. I've been, I've been to one since I've started the job. So, you know, okay. moving forward, yeah, you, you'll, you'll see me more regularly. Okay, okay. so, but I'm saying is I'm like saying. we... Uh, we're having people go to them. They should have people come in back. Come to us. 100%. Okay, yes. so That's we're in agreement. what I'm saying. Go ahead, dear. Okay. Never should it be one individual's responsibility because as good as right. Dante gets and is, he may or may not be able to attend every single meeting every month. There has to be that they are responsible for pushing that information into that office, into his inbox. Even if he can't make a meeting, they've got to know you're responsible for making sure. If he wasn't at that meeting, even if he is, he's still got to get the minutes, the email, everything. Well, Brenda, I have to say that they, they send it to me. Okay. I, I, so so we, at this moment, we actually have that end of it covered because to, somebody from CB9, from the main office, and I, Go to those meetings on a regular basis. Go to those so if meetings. I missed, if well, I missed, and somebody else, and then if I, if both of us miss, I'm still expecting to get my 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 minutes. Should okay. Be expecting to get that information, regardless of whether we are able to attend meetings or not. But because but I'm just saying that as as of this time that they have been providing that. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, in what ways does your group improve the park? We see above. Just say see above. Okay. Okay. Would you, would your group like to serve on a committee to advance the alliance's work in these areas? We'll see. To be determined, yes. right? And Nicholas, is that say what you yes. said? To be what? Say yes. Leave the door I'm open. Say yes. Oh, just say yes. Just say yes. You can always drop out later, but say yes. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything to say yes. Really? Okay. okay. Are there other groups or organizations that we recommend you? Okay, see above. Or the other committees on the board. Other oh, okay. Other committees. The health committee. I don't know all the committees on CBS. Is, the is there a health committee? The health yes, and education. There's an education committee. Yeah, health and social services. Health yeah. and social services. They should all be getting this information. They, they intersect. Everything intersects. So everybody ought to get the information. Yeah, everything I agree. Does. Every every person on every committee should be getting this information because at the end of the day, it's in the best interest of CB9. Right. 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 Oh, my gosh. There's yes. work the youth and education committee also. Yes. All right. Do you have a list of all the committees, Dante? Yes. Yes, okay. yes, if you continue. If you could email us a list of all the committees and then we could cut and paste that into. I'm just gonna say all the committees of CB9 and then let that, them- That figure. means nothing, all is means nothing because they don't know all the committees. We don't even know all the committees. Well, I do. I, yeah, well, good for you, but we need no, to I specify. To find out once I get into the board. 
I visited all the committees to inform myself. Okay, good. We need to be specific, clear and specific. Yeah, but Brenda have a good point. You know what I mean? We, should, we need to cut and paste that and put that in. Okay, um, I'll cut and paste it. Yeah. yeah. To be added later too. Yeah, I mean, put that in. If you don't want to wait for an email from me, if you just go onto our website, uh, the committees are okay. on our website. Okay, from the email, from, from the website. Okay, and then this is gonna come from me, my email address. And if they have any further, do we have any further questions or any comments we wanna make? May I suggest that you send it to Dante and also you send it to them as an official CB9 uh, correspondence. But Dante, it, am I spelling yeah, it right? If you, yeah, you, uh, it's D-A-N-T-E, it's, it's fine though. Uh, um, yeah, if you just send it to the board, I will look out for it and make sure I send it to, uh, I'll send it as well <laughs> to uh, Prospect Park Alliance. Right. Okay, cool. What we have to keep in mind is that while Dante- Okay, I'm done sharing. Here, okay, hold on. Okay, what we have to keep in mind while Dante is here at this meeting, he's, are you at all of the meetings for all of the committees? Um, <laughs> you no, had a lot of no. meetings, right? Yeah, I, I do have a lot of meetings. I, I've tried to make every right. committee meeting, you know, but you know we how it goes. So. To, we don't want to add bricks to the pile. What we want to do is make it easier for everybody to get the information. We don't want right. to offload and pile up on any one person. That's not why. You want to have okay. several points of contact. You are a point of contact, Julia and Dante. You know, if anything slips with one of you, the other person is there to catch whatever might slip through the cracks. I appreciate that, Brenda. That's very that's very clear, and I appreciate that you you push that concept on a regular basis. I appreciate that. Um, can we um, move on to CB nine, family fun and field day? Yes, we can. Uh, this is an idea I came up with. And, uh, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing me. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Uh, we have to learn to meet ourselves, right? Yes, I, I forgot to meet myself. So now the idea, I brought in the idea of the CB9 field day. Uh, I think this is something we're gonna have to do for next year. So I just wanted to bring up because the idea that would involve all the committees within C9, where we will have an activity where we invite the, all the city agencies, all the public officials, all the uh, whatever organization like the two that are presented today to be in a field where the whole community can come, have fun, have some competition and stuff like that. But I don't think we have enough time to put Nairis, but this is something we should plan for next year. Okay, so are you asking for us to make a motion on this? To no, at it, this point, no, I'm not asking for a motion. This is something we should table until next year. Am I? If the motion, well, there's a motion. The motion should be to table the, discu the discussion of family fun fair day for next year. Okay. Fair enough. Is there a second? I'm, I can make yeah. that move motion. Uh, yeah, I, I would second. Okay. That. What, okay. So, so I'm, 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 I'm back to, I'm, I'm back to taking minutes again. So, okay. Um, Nicholas. So it is family fun day. CB nine. CB nine. Family fun day. Is it just the one day? Yes, the so one day. The details will. That's why I want to see for the information. We can't hear you. Can you hear are me you now? thinking? When when are you thinking? Are you thinking next year, the summer, the September? Because it's all supposed to be a back to school activity, so. It should be something that's done between August and September. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. August and September. 
We don't meet between August and September. We're done. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm thinking next year. Again, we're done in June. <laughs> no, uh, yes. When you say no. you're done, let me say August and September. Well, things can change. That's where that's where I am. So. Uh, okay. Okay. That's your motion. Yeah. For September twenty. To table until September meeting. Yeah. September. Okay. Me for September. Okay. Me too. We're tabling for this September twenty-one, but proposed proposed event for September 2022. Right. 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 Okay. Right. Okay. That okay, is, is there any further? Okay. I, I don't know how you, what do you need to do about tabling something? I'm not, you, you just made a motion and it's recorded and that's it. Okay, then it's recorded. Means, okay, so then it could, okay, so now it will go on to old business in the next agenda. Okay, right. perfect. Okay, so right. now it's, it's, we're a record for it. Okay, do we have any old business? Red light camera ahead. Mm, any old business? I don't know. No, because no, we just knocked out our old business, which was the survey that's been- Survey, right, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, is there any new business? Full free route is 11 yeah. minutes Go ahead, Brenda. Okay, one of the things that, that came to mind for me is that Again, we had a number of people come and speak at our meetings over the course of this year. And many of them have good information, parts, brick, I don't care, the armory, all kinds of stuff. All of those, you know, and perhaps others or some of those and others, we need to maintain connection with. It shouldn't be we have a they drop in, they drop some information and they go away. And then we, we never speak about them. We never make use of them, you know, whatever. We need to have some, either that communications subcommittee or something, some way to maintain ongoing contact with these people who have information on an ongoing basis that would be beneficial to the community. So all those people that have come in, you know, if we could get them on one listed on one piece of paper and the contact person, and then we can in September reach out to all of them again, or I was thinking more like send a, a thank you for coming. And we look forward to working with you in the upcoming year, 2122. Well, I want to go a little further. I, once we start in September, I would like to propose we form a couple of subcommittees. We could have a subcommittee for parks, a subcommittee for recreation, a subcommittee for culture, and you will have designated committee members or board members that are responsible to keep in touch with those various aspects for CB9. So we have a designated member of the committee the who, whose Turn job is to Avenue. basically keep track with all those people that show up and uh, and follow up. Is that, okay, Mina? You, you, I yes, feel sir. like we're talking about subcommittees, but right now we have two, four, five members of our committee. Look forward, look forward. Well, <laughs> Many more people are getting appointed to the board. We got to finish your thought. Mina, finish your thought. So your to thought. talk about subcommittees, either, yes, more people will be appointed, but the people that are in the committee right now are not all here. Um, I, I just, attendance-wise, I'm, I'm afraid that attendance-wise, we're going to have these subcommittees that no one shows up to. So I think it's well, best well, well, first, well, the first thing we got to do is to, as okay. the chairman chef back is recommended, is to... Only I, one I, person I, talk. Only one person okay. talk. I thought she was finished. Uh, go ahead, my, my... I'm done. It, it, it was Brenda. Okay. My Brenda thing is... Brenda was not finished what she was saying. Please let the person finish whatever their thought or statement is, and then... Next person. Somebody has to recognize people, or else this is going to keep being chaotic. 
Okay, I'm gonna finish. I'm just saying that I feel that subcommittees are great idea, but when our committee is already as small, is already small, is best for every for all hands to be on just so that nothing gets lost because like Brenda was saying earlier, we don't want any one person or any two people to foster the load of one the committee and now the subcommittee because the subcommittee could wind up being one person. <laughs> You know, it, it's never not. to be heard of again. <laughs> yes. Well, if I may say something, we don't know what this committee is going to look like in September until people are nominated to that committee by the chair. So we cannot, I'm just thinking the idea. Many, we probably may need more people than are currently nominated because the committee is made up of board members and community appointed members. So if we feel we have a lot of work, and I think we could appeal to the chair to assign a lot more people to this committee so the work can get done. So let's wait and see what happens in September. But I'm just putting the idea. If you have enough people, then we could go into the subcommittee. If not, we could have a designated liaison for each of those things. So it would be one person. Okay, so, okay. Now I'm putting on my secretary's hat. Brenda, was that? Um, comment that you made was that a motion that you would like to have? I would like Nicholas to mute himself first. Okay, Nicholas, you yeah, you're you're, you're distracting. Speaking, we have to learn to mute ourselves so that our background. I got drums and music in the background here. I don't know what's going on out there. It's not even Saturday yet, but I I would like a motion that we would have a liaison call it communications liaison, whoever, to maintain contact with those people who have come to our committee meetings and who are coming in the future. And that maintain contact could simply mean once a month, you send out an email to them to say, we, we, just, we thank you for coming to our meeting. We look forward to hearing from you again in 90 days or 30 days, or could you please let us know if there's any other information that you can give to us regarding X, Y, Z. And not a different letter every time, but a format, we need a structure. And if we have structure, and if it is the five, four, two, one, okay. Okay, sorry. If it is the, the four or five, or however many of us there is, that structure can stand, and then people can come in and join in on the structure that we've already built so that we're not starting over every, every year, ever, every year, zero <laughs> or, or less than zero. And so it's not like we're in a meeting with people from the, the artists and the design team and this and that and that. I'm like, where they come from? Where, where, where did they come from? Well, well, well let me finish. The, the, mute yourself. You know, we don't need to be, you know, confused and chaotic and not know what's going on when we have people coming to attend a meeting. We should have been aware of who the art percent, whoever they are, were before the meeting started. It was on the agenda, but who was it? Who were they? Who were those mass people? You understand what I'm saying? So let's motion, motion to have a liaison person or persons or communication person who maintains regular contact with vital groups and organizations in the community. Is there a second? <laughs> Mina wants to weigh in. Or do you want to weigh in or you want a second? You want to comment? What do, what do you want to do? Quick comment, good idea. But how about if we also have our own community letter that or email form letter where we just say, Thank you. At the end of the night, after or a day or two after they've left, you know, where we just say thank you. This is us. This is remember you met us during the meeting. I was the one who, but something that just gives them our direct information and not just the not just the board, you know, the the CB9 office because it's putting it's putting <laughs> it's putting all the weight on them to give us information. Right. right. So. 
and it, and it's an office. It's a it's a non living entity called the office. You need a person. <laughs> you need the Brenda. You need the Brenda effect. <laughs> That's right. We have. To. I I I. Mina, I want you to know. I worked on another boss. committee. I worked on another committee um, with Brenda, and there was the Brenda effect, and it was like, ask Brenda. She knows. And, and 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 people and people Brenda would call people up and they would end up at her house. <laughs> Somebody ended up at her house because she had called them up so much. So people will get back to Brenda. I don't want to. I don't want to designate her, but I'm just saying there is something that's said about the personal effect, and and we have we have personally seen it. Okay, so that okay, Brenda, you want to make it as a mo uh, does anybody else want to weigh on this? Because I want Brenda to make it as a motion, and then we'll. Does anyone else have anything more? Nicholas, do you have anything more you want to say about it? The motion has already been made. What we need to do is to vote on it. Okay, it's, it's, we have a, okay, the motion is at this time, it's all over the place, but I, I think what we're saying is to create a community liaison so that people can get back to us um, so that we look, so looking forward that we thank them um, for coming to our committee and that we have a letter that um, thanks them and that directs them to come back to us and to come contact with us on a regular basis, something along those lines. Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay, that's what we're voting on. Um, we have a, do we have a second? A second. Okay, minus seconds. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all in favor. Okay, it passed. Okay, so the last piece of business that we have, do we have any more business? Okay, um, Nicholas, you have something along the lines of, um, I just want to point out, we have 15 minutes. Um, well, I, know, I think we, want to, we, we did just need another five minutes. The last one we have was, if, can we do any plan for the summer? Or the, or the forum, since we're going on hiatus, uh, I have to reach out to the chair to see what can be done in order to prepare for September and the following year. I don't know if anybody like to chime in and- Speak say, camera ahead. Okay. No, I'm confused. What do you mean? What I mean what is that- this year? Do you mean like, like meeting again in July? Yeah, people are uh, able, if they want to start brainstorming, about what passage we can plan for the following year. That's all. Okay, can it's you ask gonna be, It's not going to be an before you ask Before you ask it's, the committee, can you mm -hmm. ask us? Uh, what committee? I mean, I, I, I need to know. That's why I say I'm going to reach to the chair to find out is it possible. If it is, then we'll, the office can do the reach out if people can come or meet. It's not going to be an official meeting because uh, most of the, most of, I mean, uh, we probably won't have a quorum anyway. This is just a group of people sitting and brainstorming and what can we do? That's all. So that way, when we get to September, we don't start like Nicholas, you, Nicholas, you're, you're missing the eye contact here. Look at us. I'm looking Look at, at us. Okay. So, so we, uh, so we can get a head start on September. That's basically it. Can I comment? This is the head start. The next 10 minutes is the head start to September. <laughs> Lay it okay, out so, right now. So the Maya. point is now, why don't you let Maya speak and then we'll let's make a list. My feeling is that we, yes, we do need a head start, but today is not the day to figure out the head start. We can get the work for the community done by being more organized and cutting out the time in things that we do in our meetings. For example, having the list ready of the committee members, starting the meetings on time. There are other things that we can do to cut out the administrative stuff so that we can actually do the work that needs to be done. Um, and not necessarily need a committee, you know, a subcommittee to the committee to the subcommittee. We we spend a lot of time doing things that don't need to be done. 
And maybe if even where we may have every other month where we have a guest, I mean, it's, I love the guests. I've learned a lot through all the guests throughout the years, throughout the years. Not that it feels like years, but. Um, it feels like a year, right? <laughs> but maybe if we designate maybe every other month to have a guest or maybe just one guest at a meeting where we have more time to do the work as opposed to learning more. Because we, we have the time, everyone's given the same 24 hours, but we just have to allocate it better instead of more time being spent on mm -hmm. things. That's all. I, I, I'd like to recognize myself. I, I think that we got more work done in this one last meeting than we have all year because we had so much to do and we were we were definitely Okay, so I think, Mina, I, I totally agree um, that we can get more done if we are more organized. I, uh, I'm sorry, but I, you know, I, I tend to agree with that, but I, I think what we need to do though is to, for us here attending this meeting today, we should all pledge, all right, to be more efficient, more organized, be on time, less chaotic, you know what I mean? Because, uh, yep, look, this this time flies, you know, when we have work to do. We have guests coming, right? We have to discuss plans, you know, to do whatever we have to do. So we have to make, you know, better use of our time. And, I, you know, I agree with you, Maya, you know, if I pronounced it correctly, I agree with you. I think we all need to sit down and pledge to come out and do this stuff and do it properly and stop waste. You know, I, I, I'm not going to be PC. Stop wasting time. Yeah, like all that judge. That's, you know, I think that's all, you know, we need to do just pledge to, you know what I mean? Be a little bit more serious and take it, you know what I mean? More, more professional. I also think before each- Anyone else go back? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, Mina really. spoke, David spoke. Brenda, you can speak, please. Go ahead. It's important that we are professional and that we have a structure, a set, right. even timing wise for what we're doing. When the meeting says it starts at seven, we all need to be on at 6.58. Right. And then we need to do the roll call at seven, seven and 30 seconds so that at 7.01, 7.02, we are rolling through the agenda. But we have to commit to that. And we, 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 need to, we know now we need a list of all the members on the committee to start mm -hmm. every meeting. The chair, chair uh, uh, Nicholas, needs to have that list present. We don't need to wonder if Dante is here or Khalid is here or Mia is here. We need to have the list and then start the meeting and roll with it. And yeah. so that means if, if Dante, Khalid, Mia could send that list out, you know, prior to each meeting, then, you know, as an attachment to those of us who are on the committee, then when we start the meeting, we have the list right there and we can work. We need to work efficiently. We have been wasting my time. I'm getting hungry now. It's too late for me to eat. It's nine o'clock at night when we finish people. You know, I love seeing all okay, y'all and David. I wish I could see you, but let's move on. Be efficient and be professional. Okay, you, got, you got seven minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay, so okay, so Nicholas, what is okay? Ne okay, thank you. With that, I would uh, I would uh, answer any motion to John and wish everybody. No, that Nicholas, summer. your your bit. No, your business is not on the. I'm not writing it down if you don't make a motion. I only have to write down motions. I don't have to write down chit chat. Okay, so if you haven't got made it into a motion, it's the not chair, a motion. I want somebody, so your motion, like I said, I'm the chair. I'm entertaining a motion to adjourn. It's not coming for me. It's got to come from somebody else. Uh, motion to adjourn? No, but okay, your summer no. thing is not, No, you're not done. Your summer thing is not going to be in the minutes, and I don't have to write it down not if like you don't that. make it well, in a motion. Well, no, 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 no. My summer thing was a discussion. Okay. So you don't have, or you could write a discussion was made about the summer plan. And that's okay. it. Okay, that's fine. Why. Okay, fine. In that case, I'm agreeing. Okay, now I'm seconding that we can adjourn. 
Can can you send out the list of who's on the committee to us, uh, Dante, or have uh, Khalid well, or someone send out the current list so that when in September we at least have those people's names already. You can and come then with we can forward. Okay. Second, yeah. uh, September, September. But September, Brenda, in September there'll be a whole nother list of people. It doesn't It'll, have to yeah. be. Will we not be on the list? We will we not. not be on that you, list. I, yeah, you I mean, the new, in to, September, there could possibly again. be a whole new, a whole new list. I just want to quickly say, because I know we all are ready to go, um, talking about the inefficiencies, it, it would be beneficial to encourage people to, well, to encourage the committee to have a secretary. So the vice chair does not have it's to do the minutes. Oh, that, that, that was my first one in the beginning. Yes, definitely, that's a priority. Yeah, you have to get a sec secretary. Uh, is, you're is looking at you're that? looking at the possibilities, guys. You're looking right. at the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are the you know one, two, three, four, five who have you know been coming regularly. I haven't you missed the meeting. You will carry tunnel. That doesn't mean I need okay. another. But, but, okay, Dante. I duly noted. Everybody can hold it in their heart. You've got all summer to find your way to get your pen, get your notebook. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or we can think of it as a rotating situation and that That's next time said. is your turn. Your month is this month. Your month is that month. If you did it that month, then you're, you're in the rotation. Those are, that's another possibility. Okay. We had that discussion and that was brought up in the discussion that it could be a rotating position. Okay. Are you listening, Nicholas? My position is, I think I think we should have a permanent secretary, so that way we somebody who wants to do the job, and that's all, and they're going to concentrate on that. Okay, right. okay, I I will keep my fingers crossed. Um, right. okay, are we adjourning? Now we're agreeing to adjourn. Yes, motion to adjourn is always in order. So have a nice summer, <laughs> everyone. We'll talk. We'll we'll talk soon. I be safe, everybody guys. Nice, rest, full be everybody be safe. Enjoy your whatever. Fourth of July, your June, was it Juneteenth? June. Everybody <laughs> have everybody have a drunken Juneteenth. Okay, there you go. Thank you. There Take you care. go. Thank All you. right, guys. Thank you so much, Dante. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Have a great right. summer. Be safe, guys. Be safe. Be safe. Thank you, Dante, for hanging in. Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. Right, bye, -bye. Sure. bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello, but what could I do? Could you just go on hold for a minute and speak to them? That was so rude. <laughs>